On November 5, 2005, we flew from Israel to Morocco via Rome with an Israeli tour group led by Avi Avizemer. Our first stop was Marrakesh. We stayed in Marrakesh for four nights in the Royal Mirage Hotel. The Palais de la Bahia in Marrakesh was built toward the end of the 19th century over a period of 14 years as the residence of the Grand Vizier C. Ahmed Ben Musa. The courtyard accommodated the Sultan's four wives as well as his 24 concubines. Each wife lived with her own children separately. The palace is beautiful adorned with amazing handcraft, carvings and mosaics. Only part of it is open to the public, but one can explore the maze of alleyways, courtyards and corridors. This is the Qutubiya Mosque, the largest mosque in Marrakesh. The minaret was completed between 1184 and 1199 and stands 221 feet high. Its name is derived from the Arabic al kutubin for librarian, since it used to be surrounded by sellers of manuscripts. Now we are in the huge square known as the Jama El Fina, Square of the Dead. Visitors as well as local people come here every day and into the late evening to enjoy the colorful circus of performing artists, snake charmers, musicians, storytellers and healers. At dusk the food stalls take over and the competition is fierce. Here one can find all varieties of dishes, from boiled snails and sheep's heads to thick vegetable soup, kebabs or fresh salads. Freshly squeezed orange juice stalls stand side by side encircling the market and offering a refreshing drink. Here is our guide, Avi Zemer, buying sweets for us, for our group. Haggling in the souks of the city's Medina or Old Town is an experience not to be missed. 
It's easy to get lost in the labyrinth-covered alleyways and just as easy to lose your way in a haggling contest with a shopkeeper for whom bargaining is a way of life. It's very hard to resist the wonderful crafts and clothing and leather goods. And if you keep your good humor and wits about you, they can be bought for a fair price. The various souks are organized by trade, with many of the shop fronts also doubling as workshops, from which iron workers, carpenters, dyers, and tailors sell their wares. was taken to a homeopathic pharmacy and this Muslim woman speaks Hebrew. <laughs> These are the Manara Gardens, which are located at the gates of the Atlas Mountains and have been here since the 12th century. This is a pavilion and a basin surrounded by orchards and olive groves. The intention of the basin was to irrigate the surrounding gardens and orchards. Every evening, Abi Zema took us out on the town, and here we are enjoying an evening with a Berber dinner and show. We are now in the heart of Berber country. The Eureka Valley is one of the most beautiful and best preserved valleys in Morocco. Here we see tiny inhabited villages clinging to the steep rocky hillsides. 
We are now on the edge of the Western Atlas Mountains. From Israel. Israel. Yeah. Yes. It's good Israel? Very good. Very good Israel. Very nice. Yeah. But here is very nice. Morocco. Very nice. Very nice Morocco. Good yes. Israel. Israel is beautiful. Huh? But This is inside the Berber house. This is the bedroom. This is the kitchen and the oven. It is grinding the nuts. That is hard work. We visited the Bethel Synagogue, which is one of the three still existing synagogues in Marrakesh. This is the Jewish section of Marrakesh, the poor section. This was where the synagogue was. We enjoyed a Shabbat evening dinner in the Palmier Club kosher restaurant owned by Jacqueline Benisti. The food was excellent and we felt very much at home. <laughs> Rabbi Chaim Pinto was born in Eswara and died in 1845. He was the chief rabbi of the Jewish community of Eswara. <laughs> One of the women in our group visited her birthplace in Eswara. This city is one of North Africa's most beautiful, boasting a mixture of Portuguese, French and Berber architecture. Old City, formerly Mogador, is a UNESCO World Heritage City. As an example of a late 18th century fortified town transferred to North Africa. The fishing harbour here is very picturesque. This is the main street of Esawera.
this is a courtyard and in one of the houses and that's the Wera. We traveled from Marrakesh to Wazazate in the south. The name means the door of the desert. Wazazate hosts one of the largest movie studios in the world. Several historical movies were shot here, such as Cleopatra, Gladiator, and most recently, Babel. Many excursions into the Sahara Desert start from the city. We are in the Sahara Desert. We visited a small Berber village where Jews used to live. is clearly one of the most dramatic sites here in Morocco. In some places the gorge is only about three feet wide and 900 feet high. Along the way we stopped at this little desert resort the Berbers are selling fossilized stones. This is one of the many tombs of Rabbi David um Moshe, where many pilgrims come to pray. It is said that he worked many miracles after his death and even appeared to many Jews and granted their requests. <laughs> 
מי שברך אבותינו, יברך את כל חיילי צבא הגנה לישראל, העומדים עם יושבם ארצנו, בערי אלוהינו, ייתן להם בריאות, הצלחה, בכל מעשה דרך, אמן כן יהיה רצון. ואלכס, תן לך, תגדר. This is a panoramic view of Meknes. The new city of Meknes is quite modern. Here is the yummy sweets market. We visited this beautiful synagogue in Meknes. There are only about a hundred Jews still living here. This used to be a Talmud Torah, but it no longer functions. Fez is the fourth largest city in Morocco, after Casablanca, Rabat and Marrakesh, with a population of approximately one million. It is separated into three parts, the old, the new, and the newest section created by the French. The new city of Fez is quite modern. The old city of Fez is a shopper's dream. We visited this arts and crafts factory. The artisans use the same methods that have been used for hundreds of years. Fez is famous for its leather goods. In this tannery, reams of cowhide are treated in huge vats of dyes, whose main active ingredient just happens to be pigeon droppings. What's even more impressive are the young craftsmen who repeatedly hop into these vats of colored dye as they saturate the cowhide before taking out the leather and spreading it out on the flat rooftops nearby. To say it's a strong smell is an understatement. We had a good time in this store trying on traditional clothes. For men also for women. But the jalaba exists for winter or summer or spring. Different wild one. In Africa, what we call them bubu. Here we said gandura. We visited the street and the apartment where Maimonides, also known as the Rumbum, lived from 1159 to 1165. He acquired most of his secular knowledge in Fez, studying at the University of al karouin during which time he composed his acclaimed commentary on the Mishnah. The Jewish Community Center, Maimonide, is one of the most well-organized in Morocco, with a kosher restaurant and modern synagogue on the premises. Ironically, the Jewish cemetery in Fez has more saints than any other cemetery in Morocco. 
One of the more important saints is Lala Solika, who was killed for refusing to convert to Islam. We also visited the Ibn Danan synagogue. This is the Palais Jamais nightclub where we ate dinner and watched a belly dancing show. Rabat is located on the Atlantic Ocean and has important textile, food processing and construction industries. The old city of Rabat, known as the Medina, is surrounded by a wall. The streets inside the walls are narrow and very picturesque. Both King Hassan V and his son Hassan II are buried in this mausoleum in Rabat. This is the Hassan II Mosque, built in commemoration of the 60th birthday of former Moroccan King Hassan II. It is the largest religious monument in the world after Mecca. Today is Friday and people are going to the mosque to pray, men and women. This is the main synagogue in Casablanca. The 4,500 Casablancan Jews worship in over 30 synagogues. They eat in kosher restaurants, entertain themselves in Jewish community centers, and attend Jewish schools and social service centers. Bethel is the largest synagogue and an important community center with seating for 500 persons. This is a Jewish bakery in Casablanca. This is Friday afternoon. Rakmatanu. Yofi.
This is a cemetery, Jewish cemetery in Casablanca. This is the old city of Casablanca. Big, so what? Look, hello. Oh. Casablanca is a very beautiful city, very vibrant, modern, very, very beautiful. This is our hotel, the Farah Hotel. This is Muhammad V Boulevard. This is Hassan II Square in Casablanca. It's one of the exclusive areas in Casablanca. 60% of the villas here are owned by Jews. Oh.